The Galaxy M52 was actually a good smartphone, so when the Galaxy M53 arrived, we started to get a lot of comments like these. Now, I know a lot of you guys are confused about the Galaxy M53, so we decided to use this phone, thoroughly test it, and this is our Galaxy M53 review, where we are going to tell you the real truth, which honestly nobody is talking about. Trust me, if you want to buy this phone, you need to watch this video till the end. So this is the Galaxy M53 5G and this is a phone that brings a few changes over the M52. The first change is this back design. The back pattern is gone and you get a more clean of matte finish back, which I honestly like, but that's it. Everything else is the same on the design front and that means it's still a good phone in terms of the weight and the thickness. The fingerprint scanner is still in the power button, which in my usage was fine. Not the fastest scanner I've used, but fine. Also like the Galaxy M52, there's the dual SIM plus micro SD hybrid slot. The haptics are okay, kind of on par with the other phones in this segment. Now the cons of the Galaxy M52 design are still here. So this is all plastic. The frame is plastic, the back is plastic. There's no headphone jack, no IP rating. But more importantly, this phone still does not have stereo speakers. Yes, there's just this one speaker at the bottom and that's it. Now this speaker is good and fairly loud, but no stereo speaker setup is honestly disappointing in 2022. The display is also the same as the M52, so you already know the specs. Now, I'm here with this being the same AMOLED panel as the M52 because it is a good display. It just looks premium, be it while casually using the phone or be it while watching movies or shows. It has great color reproduction, wide wing angles, and a very good high contrast ratio. There's also the 120Hz refresh rate, and One UI looks really good with the faster refresh rate on, and it's also decently bright for outdoor usage. See, I like this display, but one thing that's missing is HDR support. There is wide one everyone license, so full HD playback is there in apps like Netflix and Prime Video. But yeah, you can see from the Netflix playback specification page, there's no HDR. Now, the design and display are mostly the same from the Galaxy M52, but the big changes come in the processor and the cameras, and I'm not sure they're good changes. I say this because the M52 had the Snapdragon 778G chipset, while the M53 here has the Dimensity 900. Don't get me wrong, Dimensity 900 is actually a good chipset, which I have used in a lot of phones, but the problem is, it's not an upgrade to the 778G. Here are the benchmark scores from both the phones, and you can see that the M52 with the 778G performs better every single time. So the Dimensity 900 in the Galaxy M53 is kind of a downgrade from the 778G in the M52, but remember at the start I said that I'll be talking about something that nobody is talking about? Well, I was talking about the throttling performance of the M53. See, I've used a lot of Dimensity 900 phones, be it the Realme 9 Pro Plus or the Xiaomi 11i, and the D900 did not throttle on those phones, but on the M53, it really does. Here's the basic 20 threads, 15 minutes test, and just look at the graph. Just to be clear, this M53 is a retail unit, so it's not like this is a demo unit which has some problems. This is the final retail unit. Also, this test is with the phone's performance set to balanced, which is the default, so this is very surprising. As you can see, the end result was the phone throttling to 63%. Now, this is not a one-time thing. We did this test a number of times, even compared it against the M52. And you can see that the M53's throttling issues are real. It's really strange. Now, this throttling is not something that affected my day-to-day -day performance. The phone is actually a good performer. There is no lag while opening, closing apps, multitasking or playing videos. I did notice some lag in the Reddit app, but that may be because of the mess the Reddit app is. The game performance is good too. In all the games I tested, there was no lag or stutter and I did not have any issues with long gaming hours. There's no weird heating too. So the performance is actually not bad, but the throttling in the CPU throttling test app is kind of concerning in the long run. Moving on to the cameras where the main camera is now a 108 megapixel sensor, but Samsung has downgraded the ultra wide camera from 12 megapixel to 8 megapixel. Also, the macro camera is kind of a useless 2 megapixel lens now. Now, honestly, I would have liked it more if Samsung had added OIS, but it is what it is. Now, the camera performance is a bit of a hit and miss. In good lighting, I thought the 108 megapixel camera does fairly well, taking detailed shots that are sharp and crisp. I also noticed good dynamic range. Now, there is at times a bit of oversaturation, but I don't think it's an issue. In low light, however, the camera performance is kind of okayish. Some photos come out a little soft while some are sharp and good, but sometimes there's a lot of noise. So yeah, heat in daytime, miss in low light. The ultra wide angle camera is also kind of okayish. It does not have the details, but I like that the shots have good contrast and mostly good colors. I also took some videos from the phone and they aren't very stable, but quality wise, they're fine. Similar to M52's camera performance. Now, the camera performance here is fine, but it's not the best in this price range. Here are a few comparison shots versus the M52 and the Realme 9 Pro Plus. And if you ask me, there's no beating the Realme 9 Pro Plus in terms of the overall exposure, be it in low light or daytime. And what's interesting is that the M53 and M52 photos are mostly similar. It's not a big difference at all. 
The selfie camera on the other hand seems good on the M53, it's actually the same camera as the M52 but I noticed more accuracy in terms of exposure and sometimes better details. The front camera also supports 4K video which is honestly great. Hey guys, here's a 4K 30fps video from the Galaxy M53's front camera to give you an idea about the camera quality and the mic. And if you're enjoying this video so far, make sure to hit like. That'll be really good. Apart from the processor and the cameras, the battery is the same, 5000mAh on the M53. But like most recent Samsung phones, they have done the unthinkable. They have removed the charger from the box. Yeah, I don't like this move, but I think this is how it's going to be from now on. And if the battery performance is decent to good, I got a screen on time of around five and a half hours, six hours, which I'd say is in the good category because generally I started the day with the phone at 100% and the low battery message would pop up late at night. As for charging in a world where 65 watt chargers, 120 watt chargers are becoming kind of normal, this supports slow 25 watt charging, which takes one and a half hours to fully charge the phone. Anyway, the M53 has the latest software. There's one UI 4.1 on top of Android 12 and Samsung has promised three major updates and four years of security patches, which is actually pretty good. What's not good though, is the amount of bloatware this phone has. Yes, there's so many third-party apps and not just this. There's this widget by default on the home screen, which is basically an ad. The lock screen glass feature is also an ad. So one UI 4.1 is good and feature rich, but yeah, it can be a little more clean. Also, the M53 comes with Samsung Pay Mini, while the M52 came with full-fledged Samsung Pay and that's because there's no NFC on the M53. Yep, Samsung went ahead and just removed NFC. I know, very weird. On the connectivity front, the call quality is decent, no problems there. The phone has 12 5G bands, Wi-Fi 5 dual band support, Bluetooth 5.2, there's support for carrier aggregation. You get all the important sensors except for barometer, which is only present in flagship phones, so it's all fairly good. Anyway, coming to the important questions, is the Galaxy M53 worth it at Rs 26,499? Should you buy this phone? The truth is, the Galaxy M53 is a flawed, flawed, flawed smartphone. And I don't think I can recommend this phone to anybody. I mean, the Galaxy M53 is basically a downgrade to the Galaxy M52, be it in terms of chipset or the camera, or the fact that it removes things like the charger and NFC. Plus, it does not bring any of the M52's missing features, be it stereo speakers or OIS. And even though the performance seems good generally, the throttling test results are not very promising. See, if you really, really want a Samsung phone, the M52 makes more sense. It's available on Amazon at a lower price of Rs 23999. Other than that, if you don't want a Samsung phone, there are other options too. The Realme 9 Pro Plus has kind of a tacky design, but it is a good all-round phone with great camera performance. There's also the new Moto H30, which has the Snapdragon 778G Plus chipset with the stock Android 12 combo and a nice compact design and things like stereo speakers and an in-display fingerprint scanner, all of which the M53 lacks. Anyway, that was my verdict of the Galaxy M53, but I want to know your thoughts in the comment section below. So comment down below. Also, give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Make sure to share it and subscribe to our channel for more amazing tech videos. That's me signing off. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. WhatsApp's long-awaited feature is finally here. If you long press a message on WhatsApp, you get a pop-up with six emojis.